That, that's me, your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. There's no turning There's back. There's no fucking turning no. back. You guys gotta <laughs> deal. Fucking deal with me. I'm not going any fucking <laughs> where. Okay, we are recording. We are live. Um, are you ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hey. <laughs> How do y'all? I am here with Shayna, the credit shrink. And I'm here with MJ. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tell everybody what you're about. I'm about making people's dreams come true and simplifying the journey on the way there, such as credit, things that get in your way financially and that stop us from buying homes, cars, opening businesses. I just like to pave the way and give them the, the journey, you know, in the beginning, the things that they can't figure out, the small details, get those out of the way so we can think about bigger things. Well, you know, um, and we like big. <laughs> <laughs> so, we like bigger yeah, things. Yeah. Um, but I never thought that uh, credit could be sexy. And in um, interviewing, was going over kind of like what we we're going to talk about. Uh, I, You make it very interesting and... Um, it's just a, it's just a different way of looking at it that I think will help people uh, understand their credit and believe a lot more in the process of Thank their you. dreams. Right. Actually, uh, I was thinking the other day, how did we meet? Um, how see. I mean, how long have we known each other? Like over three years, I'd say. No. And wait, four years? Has it been Dude, over it was that? Way before really? the pandemic. Drew, you're, I you can't believe the pandemic's been three years already. You were dating that guy in But I do know how I met you. Yes. Wow. That's that long it's ago. It's been long ago. Yeah, he was the, a wrestler. The, the boxer. The boxer. Yeah. yeah. And was yeah. in that movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so can't give him up. No, but. <laughs> no. That's for another show. You were baby. dating him. How long ago was that? That was. I mean, I don't have the timeline down, but definitely I know how I met you was through the Google tanning salon. And right. I was looking for you that way. And then we started off with our dating journey and talking in the in the That's booth. Right. And you ended up being on the same vibration as me. And like, I found another woman hustler. That's you know? right. You oh. wanted to win nonstop. We were talking about, <laughs> I was like, I came over here. Not, I forgot about the tan. I know. <laughs> Just I like people forget about the credit. I'm like, That's easy. Yeah. You know, give me something difficult. <laughs> we, um, I think we fell in love and then we ended up talking for like an hour. And we're like, okay, we're, love we're sisters sight. now. Yep. It was love at first sight. And you even got me naked the first day. <laughs> 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 I got I get everybody naked on the first day. <laughs> but that is a shout out for the platinum. That's right. <laughs> and then you're like, we you did dancing with stars and like this woman doesn't do I think you did so, like you no, did some we, or um, no 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 the we che- sponsored the, the Arizona Cardinal Cheerleaders. Yes, there you go. Um, Sons and currently um, Miss Arizona organization, all the way to Miss America. Uh the Miss Arizona that goes all the way to Miss uh, America. And I have really hoped to get her on because man, she said she would. I saw you over there sponsoring. Girl, her story is incredible. Incredible. So hopefully we have, I know you'll get her on because you were just there. I know you like my wig. Yeah. I love it. I mean, you're going to tell the story as to why (laughs) why you're wearing that wig, right? We got to get a drum roll. People are wondering. Um, The reason why. Other than you hot. I know. Yeah. Well, I wear wigs for my art pieces, yeah. so it's it's not anything that's brand new for me. But um, I started where I started using this shampoo and conditioner, this hairline that is supposed to be natural and started using that for about a month and a half. And my hair started falling out in clumps in the shower. So every woman's nightmare was happening to me. Um and yeah, yeah, this is a no go. If in clumps, mm-hmm. that would be so. Uh, that would be so yeah, scary. It, it was serious. Yeah, like, you almost you think sure? you have an illness if that happens, yeah, and that was a reaction. It was, it was just super. But um, a lot of people had this reaction, and so there's a class action lawsuit actually that 
uh, is going on about it. But anyway, so my hair got really, really thin and thank God for extensions and things like that. I can pull it off, but, um, I like to take things. I like to take lemons and make chocolate cake with it. So, um, one night before I was getting ready to record a BBL, uh, episode with Ricky, I was like, I can't go on with my regular hair. I'm going to have to wear a fucking wig. And, uh, but then I love that. I love that idea because it's just more extra and, and I, everybody knows me. I love being extra. Yeah. So, um, but that's why so many people relate to you. I've always admired that about you. You have that, uh, who cares about judgment? You've always spoken from your heart and you're artistic. Whenever you open up to me about, you know, the book that you're writing and all the things that you've gone through, you've given me tidbits, but I could pick up on, you know, through your art on your posts. And I can tell that it runs really deep, like what you've been willing to show with us and exploit yourself and all of the, those layers of what goes on inside MJ, how you were created. And it was really fun to see your journey because it, it doesn't just stop at tanning. And that's what I mean by when I said tanning was just such a small, it's a, the byproduct of you is such, it's incredible, like your journey. And I know people are interested to, to watch and see uh, because you give them a lot more than what you bargain for. You know, you can't find people like you. There's definitely no one like you. Thank you so much. I love that. Yeah, you're so vulnerable. You know, you, you hold nothing back and um, you're, you're you, you're true. Uh, so I think people really need that in this world uh, when we're so it's always about the angle and what you look like. And you've shown us, you know, the journey, like behind the scenes, too. So, girl, I felt that that was super authentic. And I truly, truly appreciate yeah, that. I mean, I have a post in my mind that always makes me, you know, that that brings me back to who you are, the truth, you know, when you're near the toilet. I mean, people would have to see your Instagram to know. Yeah, but yeah you have a. You know, it's like unfolding a book of your life and it just gets deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. oh, if only they knew. Oh, thank you yeah, so if only much. They knew. Yeah. Well, I'll share it all. And yeah. the journey is just beginning still for me, I feel like. So, <laughs> yeah. So when people think it's just, uh, you know, someone's just doing a wig for attention or, yeah. or, or whatnot, it, you really have a different, you know, everything yeah. about you is, is much more than what you, mm -hmm. you thought originally, just like the hair falling out and nobody knows you know, that story and they maybe you just are wearing a wig, but it's like, <laughs> nope, there's more to it. You know, with you, what I love about you mm. is that people get to come to you with their dreams. And that is really what your whole, the whole emphasis, That's the, reason, the is yeah. your dreams, the credit is the easy part for you to take care of, but their dreams is what you help them achieve mm -hmm. through the credit. We need to unpack all of that, reverse engineer their lives because everything, I know it, 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 it's a formula for me. I mean, there's always an end goal and you start here and you need to go there. So, you know, if you want to play Monopoly and you want to play real estate or do you want to play first home? Do you, you want to play, have your first child and you're just getting married? All of that you know, has to do with, with credit and being fully aware of um, the shortcuts. And I always like to say there is no shortcuts like in, in my industry because I'm already giving that to you, but there are shortcuts when you don't know what you're doing and the and industry there is the long way techniques. around. That's right. There and is. then there's discouragement and then there's giving up. And then there's like, you, this is all stuff that you even think in your head. You're like, yeah, I can't, I can't apply for that. I can't get that. That's holding me back. This conversation, this, you know, it's constantly going in the back of our minds. Um, but she takes care of that, you guys. That's why we have her on here because um, chances are you want a home, uh, you want a new car, you, like she said, want to have a family, um, you want to have a podcast, you want to have you want whatever, to an entrepreneur. Business, an yeah. entrepreneur. You want to buy a property right now? I mean, right. Yeah. So what do we do? So uh, you ask them what their dream is and you have a vision board that you actually create with them. Yes, I do. Wow. How'd you know that? Because I listen when wow. you talk. I really do. Uh, and, and I'd like to add on to that, that we want to break through the fallacies. There's so much information yeah. coming at us. Um, that you never know who to listen to these ads that come mm -hmm, at you. Mm -hmm, so you just don't know like where to start because you get overwhelmed. And then some people say to do this and then the other person will say the opposite of what you just learned. And so, but it's I, also, they, <laughs> they market those to make yes, you feel bad. Yes, yes. And what I love about you is you do or to the discourage opposite. you. Right. Yes. <laughs> like you need this or go for this or, you know, you're bad. Step one, <laughs> step two, step three, baby. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like this ominous, you know, right. like, you know, but you're like, no, it's bad to dreams. have to keep bad credit. It's right. not bad to fix bad credit. Right. 
right. <laughs> so the good news is I can only fix bad credit. <laughs> So if somebody comes up to me and apologizes about it, I'm like, you only need to apologize if you stay where you're at. When you call me and you have right. bad credit, you know, that's what I'm here to do is 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 fix you. Like anything that's wrong, it doesn't even have to be credit. Like I said, it can be bigger than that. So it, credit, you can make it as big as you want to go. I mean, you can turn it into an investment world. You know, you can go as far as you want or if you just want to simplify it and and get a, your first home, an FHA loan, you know? Right. So, so you say um, that... Uh, credit is hard, but everybody can relate to a dream. What do you mean by that? Well, and anybody, uh, maybe they're stuck in their in their office or their, or their cubicle or even the pandemic, they're stuck at home and they see online or they see all these posts of all these entrepreneurs with money stacks on their Ferrari cars. And, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they, they see the dream is out there. Real? Yeah, it just <laughs> seems so unattainable because these people make it look like they're flying on jets and I never see the keys. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and, and everybody has a dream. They want to move does, a step does forward. Does a jet have keys? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. I want to see some Somebody yes. like take a picture of them flying instead of on the jet. Right. <laughs> or right. I want to see them driving the Ferrari, not in front of the Ferrari. <laughs> but anyway, all these people showing off. And so you feel less worthy than you feel that dreams are unattainable for you. And I want to bring the, the I want to make the dream attainable. And you, you'd be surprised that through um, the, the, the good old these ideas that you hear the secret or or these things that you hear just here and there that couldn't work. That doesn't work. But honestly, if you just take one one step out and 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 create like a, a whiteboard for yourself or even a piece of paper like anything you can build a map and a map is the same thing as a road trip or, or anything if you just have a little you start here and you want to be here and all the navigation in between doesn't matter you know I would I'd, I love to unpack those dreams with people it's really what what I love doing the most you, like um you take the anxiety out yeah i kicked that out the door (laughs) yeah so you get to sit down with her and she takes the anxiety your fears um the judgment and all of that and erases it and helps you feel really good your job is to keep dreaming but i really want to say you mentioned the secret um my gosh uh the energy around dreams and uh if you have bad credit or facing something that may challenge your credit, um, the energy, the negative energy does affect your reality, your life. The way you walk. Right. The so way you talk. It's <laughs> so extremely important that if you can help somebody visualize, or not visualize, but help them know that their dream is totally achievable, their credit's not going to hold them back. Matter of fact, we could take your credit, turn it around, and go achieve your dream. Uh, the energy from her taking her taking the anxiety away, the fear and all of that and allowing you to be positive is what I'm getting at is your job. And for you to to remain positive changes your entire reality and your world. You're taking away the anxiety of the bad credit. You are an absolute negative vibration walking around when you have bad credit from, from the dating world to, you know, at, well, how you go to the dealership and you, you're you that person, mm-hmm. you know, with the negative equity or, or those things that really can be fixed just by calling someone, even though we don't charge to talk to you. So it's just it, your, your negative eye on until you just you get rid of the bad credit, the phone calls, the the anxiety and all those things. It really does start with finances, you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to go over what uh, most people are probably stuck in right now after the pandemic and the uh, overview of uh, credit and its character. That's why I say that it's not like, it's like not a number thing so much. You make this where it kind of has a personality, you right. know what I mean? Thank and um, the character of credit. And so you just kind of get to know the character. Yes. And go, oh, and it's not so, it's not so scary. You guys not so intimidating, um, which is the credit gods. They all have a character, this credit credit is there's three credit gods that you need to please mm-hmm, and they all have mm-hmm. a character like you say mm-hmm. so you got to please each one of them <laughs> yeah uh, so the biggest trend right now is inflation mm-hmm. and uh okay so how valuable is credit right now with today's circumstances Ex- extremely uh the way i look at it is you should always be lendable um and with the inflation right now going on, if you were to use it to your advantage, um, if you were to buy a house, for example, you'd be able to use good credit to pay down your mortgage like 10 times faster. So there's inf- inflation is, you know, the cost of goods and all those things we can't control, but we can control 
you know, the amount of uh, money we're spending and wasting, you know, giving it more to the banks and we can use that to our advantage. You know, like I say, if you buy a property or an investment, you can use inflation because there's nothing you can do about inflation. I mean, all you can do is vote and do your part, but you know, there's nothing we can do about the situation we're in. So I like to look at, you know, using other people's money and using it wisely and, well, and getting ahead. You say that good credit gives you wings. Yes. It's you're restricted, you're, you're jailed, you're, you're handcuffed to everything you do from getting a job to, to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to go rent a place, uh, you know, you always have to check that box. If you filed a bankruptcy, it, it goes with you for 10 years. You have to check the box, check the box, or you can't get a house under the lending conditions. You know, we're going to go, we're going to get into the, yeah. into the BK and all of that. But stuff. yeah, you got to have wings if, if you want to uh, right. fly. <laughs> well, that's also how you rise above this shit. You guys. Yes. Um, but let's do this really quick. What is the difference between you and Dave Ramsey? Well, Dave Ramsey, uh, he doesn't necessarily promote having debt. And I believe that if you manage debt properly, uh, again, I get into the investing side, uh, that I believe that good debt, there's such thing as good debt. Uh, Dave Ramsey does serve a purpose with budgeting and and for the basics, um, definitely to pay off debt. But you can also use debt with a, as a tool to, to make money on money that's not yours. You use the bank's money. And, and then you can, you know, that's how all investors do it, right? You just borrow money from the bank and you get it the lowest interest rate possible and get a return on your investment. It can be as simple as getting a duplex instead of a primary home. Mm-hmm. And you can use that uh, cheap money from the bank and a lower interest rate because you have good credit, lendable credit. And, and that's debt. Yeah. And, and that's debt. That's the difference between her and Dave Ramsey. Yeah. And I wouldn't like, want to pay off pay for everything cash. Yeah. I don't want to pay off my debts ever. I want to use that whatever return I, I can bring in. I, I don't want to pay off my home. I want to take out the equity of that home and go buy another home with that equity. And I'll just keep making the payments so I can keep bringing in more money. Because if you do the, the math on the interest rates, I just, uh, Dave Ramsey does serve a great purpose. It's just, you know, where you're at on that, on that level. If you need to get out of debt, of course, it's good to pay things off. Once you get to that next level, you know, I'd say Dave Ramsey has a good snowball effect where you mm-hmm. want to pay down debts. But then once, once you have good credit, what do you do with it? Or if you have, uh, what, he helps you get out of bad credit and, and I get to help you get out of bad credit. But what do you do next once mm-hmm. you have good credit mm-hmm. and you will use debt? So oh, he doesn't he's even think credit or having your, your debt credit is good score, at all. He's he's like doesn't matter what your credit's. He's like that's not. Yeah, I mean, I've 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 watched a lot of his episodes and read a lot of his things. Um, he still believes in having excellent credit, but it's just more about he's helping people that are really in over their heads with tons and tons of money that he, they need to pay off, you know, to mm-hmm, multiple mm-hmm. creditors. So. I think he's just talking to his audience, the ones that are right. really in debt a lot. So, and I'm just talking to the same audience that you have to go through that first to pay off debt. And then what do you do next? Because I think, again, that goes to the dream and you want to buy something or you want to, you want to accomplish something bigger. And usually people don't know how to fill in that gap. So, you know, they're like, okay, I paid off debt or how do I pay off debt? What's next? Or do I even pay this debt? That's right. the question. That's the big thing. And, and Dave Ramsey doesn't promote, he, he talks, um, he doesn't talk, discuss because really we're not allowed to in a certain way. So this is credit education is paying off collections. He talks about settling and doing those things. So I, I don't, ta- I don't want to do that. Right. Yeah. So you can lead the conversation there, but yeah, that's, that's going to be something we unpack. Yeah, no, definitely. So if you guys have debt, just st- Hold on a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So um, the difference between uh, 2008, our crash, and yeah. how everybody, um, bad credit was something that everybody kind of adjusted to. Uh, it was a crash, so I have bad credit. And so anybody that required good credit, you know, everybody had to adjust. So what's the difference between, or is there even a difference Um between that time and us now with the pandemic and because everybody going through that it was normal uh everybody felt the ship sank for everybody back then and we're you know who knows what the timeline is of this uh inflation period or recession that we're in um but before in 08 everybody was uh everybody the banks lent to uh, overlended um, they didn't have any proof w- with the amount of money that they would borrow. They would lend to you with stated income, stated mm-hmm. assets versus now um, they still have restricted guidelines and conditions. So we're still doing better than what we were. Um, but the difference is, you know, inflation and, and 
that other side. So we have, they're not doing it again. Yeah. They're not going with the lending. Yeah. It's a little different now. The mortgage companies are still, yeah. So the difference, I'd say the difference is now um, we, we have a really high interest rate. We're not after the crash um, after the crash was a good time to buy. Um, But now we're going through that time where everything's more expensive. And if somebody is sitting there with bad credit and they're thinking, well, we just went through the pandemic. I'm trying to like, those are the people that I'm wanting to kind of get an answer for because a lot of people just kind of, you know, shrug. They're like, you know, we just went through the pandemic and they don't think that credit is a big deal. Like ev- we all went through this. And so uh, the pandemic is the reason why I have bad credit. That is not the way you should be thinking. And um, I like the way that you say that credit is the ultimate judgment. Yes. Everybody has a report card and you're being judged by, you know, credit on whether or not you're going to be able to make it through the pandemic. That's going to be the difference between the sink or the, you know, swim. So with the pandemic, I would look at it like, um, again, you can use it to your advantage or you can just, you know, fall victim to what they want you to, to be, which is below average and no more middle class. And, you know, they want you to stand in the food stamp line and accept the fact that we're all going down. Uh, but if you just position yourself with just credit, you, that would be the difference between making it through this difficult right. time. And if, and even if um, there's certain ways that you should think about if you're in an emergency situation, which I th- yeah, think we broke that. that down. We're going to go through that. Yeah. So the person that's in, in the pandemic and not thinking credit is important. Um, you just, it's, you, it's quite obvious that it's important. I mean, yeah, you when you go rent an apartment right now, the rents are super high. Right. So what's going to be the difference if you have a dog, anything like that little, why, if you have excellent credit that, or bad credit, e- either one, you're going to know that all those other things you have to deal with. Do you have a dog? Do you need an extra room? Do you have, you know, do you need a yard? Like all of those little things that mattered for you to just move to that next level or, or your shelter is the most important thing. And credit is going to be where you get very, that yeah. or don't get yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And this, so this is really how you're, you're going to be survive. the last one they choose. Right. <laughs> if exactly. you have bad credit. Unless you got a lot of cash and uh, but this, what we're trying to get you guys through the rest of the pandemic and what, what, um, what's getting ready to come I believe it's going to get well, worse. Yeah, she thinks it's going to get worse. And so she just wants to help you, um, give you the education so that you see it's coming, how to plan for it, and um, get Acknow- out on the other side. Acknowledge that it's here. Right. You know, not just like you said, just not worry about it. Because, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. you got to worry about it. Don't, yeah. don't do, don't, don't just shut, shut it, it off, off like everybody has bad credit because we just went through a pandemic because that's, again, the way you think is everything it's mm-hmm. the energy and it's what's going to be your reality and you will deal with your bad credit sooner or later mm-hmm. <laughs> you're gonna right. have to you're gonna you have no um, choice it's all right so you. you mentioned um that your credit can even keep you from getting a job in order to make the money to pay off any debt or to go for your dreams because if you're going to be a firefighter a police officer a teacher um get a job in insurance um any, any kind of things in financial institution they're going to check your credit and if you have bad credit you're not going to get the job again. They're going to judge you on your character. Right. The ultimate yeah. Judgment. And you have a number, you know, attached to your, the byproduct of how you deal with your life. Earner. Yeah. And credit, it, it can just be that you're negligent and they want to know that they want to know that you are taking care of your behind the scenes, what they can't see. And it really is simple. And, but they run your credit. Yeah. They run your credit. They run and your they credit judge you on to get that. a job. Definitely. I've had to write so many letter of explanations, like for, for p- clients that come in and they need to get a job, like with a lending, uh, lending institute and, or they want to be a mortgage guy or a real estate guy. Uh, those companies will require that their credit meets a certain criteria. And so I have to write a letter on their behalf and let them know that it's under legal investigation. So please don't judge me because it's under, but at least they have something in right. with me because Other then they can get yeah. away with with like at least getting the job versus them not doing it all. Today's profession versus minimum wage. It's a no brainer. Like there's no way you can survive on that. And a lot of people, you know, they want to have yeah. more than one stream of income. And so, you know, if you're, if you're trying to do real estate, imagine if you're um, dealing with a realtor who has bad credit, it's like, 
your it's it should be your fiduciary responsibility to at least have your own good credit in order for you to advise other people whether whatever industry you're in unless you're bagging groceries and you are not you know of interest of of any of these things but mm-hmm. i think our audience is definitely yes. into you know bettering themselves and so you're judged harshly uh for that and i think that your wife or your husband would would also appreciate it if they can be able to move faster and not have to worry about you know having bad credit bad credit you know, attacks you from all angles. <laughs> right. You know? And then you don't want to be the one. one that has the bad credit when you're married or in a relationship. Yeah. And, and the, you know, that's, I mean, it happens. Nobody's being judged by any means, but not having the tools and um, being um, uh, fearful or don't want to talk about it because it's bad credit um, where we want to talk about it because you can take care of it. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to feel like that. And well, you can change it all credit. around. I, I, I lost everything, you know, back in the recession, I had owned a mortgage company and, and all of those places that uh, went out of business, the wholesalers uh, caused me to, this is how I learned all of this. So, you know, any person that feels bad about having bad credit, you know, you have to realize that everybody, that any any professional, any business investor, any person that mm-hmm. looks higher to you in your own mind, they've all started uh, with, they've all had bad credit at some point. Every investor's made a bad deal or, mm-hmm. you know, any any person next to you has had experienced bad mm-hmm. credit. Typically 95% of the time, there's been either a partner that caused it or they experienced it. So there should be no shame in this at all. Be the one that does something about it. Yes. It's not having the information and not doing anything about it is where. Um, and I'd like to bring that up that I I believe in um, doing everything and they do nothing. Like I only have you, if someone comes under my wings, I really do take off all of the pressure of them having to understand or know anything. So that way they aren't intimidated because it is, it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. finances. Yes. And maybe you do your profession. You're, I would be intimidated by what you did. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't do what you do. Mm-hmm. So I know exactly what happens when a creditor calls. I know exactly what card you need. I know exactly what all you right, don't so need. Go. So um, you also say that your credit matches your character. Yes. I like that. Yes. So... I mean, imagine I how mean, you walk when you have good credit. I mean, right. honestly, have you ever felt when you're being attacked by finances, like just the way that you walk, <laughs> the way that you dress, the way that the you, way you feel, see yourself the in way the world? That, yeah, if you're depressed or not, it's, it makes all the difference, right? Yeah. Finances are heavy. <laughs> um, okay, so I really, when we talked about this, I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Uh, the consolidation lie the consolidation oh, and get into this. get all of your credit all of your bills and consolidate it and have one payment and she is saying hell no right okay this is my favorite part yeah so well, i had i have a contract like in my hi- my head right now a scenario where you think okay you're going to take all of your debt and you're going to, um, you have $30,000. They try 000. and make you feel good. This yeah, is the first yeah. thing that they do is try and make you feel yeah. good. Let's say, Take save, the, relieve the pressure. Captain save a, you know. Save a, <laughs> <laughs> Captain, yeah. yeah. So, right. so they come in with this grand idea that they can take your 30K and they give you a smaller payment. It looks, you know, it looks enticing. And you take your 30K and then, and then you, you pay instead of your individual payments that you're going to pay individually to those creditors. Um, then they're going to give you a lump sum payment mm-hmm. of like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars a month for like forty-eight months. You know, all the way up to seventy-two months, roughly. And then they have all these fees that you're going to pay. Um, but all they're doing is saving up money for you to settle on those accounts, and and they can't even guarantee that they'll be able to settle or that the creditor or the collection agency will be able to take that settlement amount. So consolidation is just basically a, a ploy for them to save the money for you because they feel that you're not disciplined enough uh, to save up money to then settle on all of these accounts that you owe money on later on. So they start saving money for you, and that's what that payment's for, is to save it up or store it inside of an account that they will then use that money to to settle on each account that you owe on one at a time as you're saving up monthly paying that X amount of dollars that was configured by the debt consolidation company. And I will I'll, I'll allow you a question, but I, I just wanted to bring up that um, just remember that when you do make those settlements, you are still keeping and adopting negative credit the whole time. So even right. after the 72 months or 48 right. months, you still are keeping the bad credit. Right. They're not doing anything about that. No. And they're and taking no money. Guarantees. And they're taking their 
piece of the pie. Yes. The fees. Yeah. And there's no, and you also get tax on the difference um, typically. So, you know, you'll be taking in um, the, the tax difference of what you save that you think you saved from that amount of the bill that you owed for um, in the beginning. And then the settlement amount, if that gap in between that amount will be taxed on. And so when I read these contracts, you know, they sound good when, when somebody, you know, sells you on them, but I just don't I, get, I think the that, money goes in the trash. It goes to bad credit. You're paying for bad credit is all right. And so she feels differently about paying for bad, your bad credit. You're debt. paying for bad credit She's, by paying the debts, the collections. Right, 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 right. Um, uh, Cause there's, there's two subjects here, collections, uh-huh. owing the collections and owing the original creditor. Okay, right. so consolidation two, we're gonna go means, through that. Yeah, yeah just to give you like a good angle. So consolidation means you're dealing with collections, third parties, right? So that people so, don't get confused right. here. Uh-huh. Original creditor and doing your own Eight, little refinance. They're not there anymore. We're not talking about that. Right. Yeah, we're talking about people that have been through charged off. They've gotten sent collection agencies, mm-hmm. and they're wondering what to do with that debt. And what to do with the bad credit that they have, or maybe the the harassment that they're receiving right. on the phone or via letter or via lawsuit. If you have good credit and the sink or the ship is sinking, you're going down with the ship. You like this one. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, because like you know your ship going down, credit, yeah. right? They th- people think good credit is going to save them. They don't realize you have to have better than good credit. But it, in today's world and where we're going, good credit, you're going to sink with the ship. Yeah. So basically, if you know you're going to sink and you know you're going to crash the plane, you know you're going down, let's say. And somebody, yeah, you, you, you got to know how to land exactly. Are you going to crash right or are you just going to crash and completely demolish your entire plane? Like, Right. You, you got to know how to come out of this. So if you do owe debt, you know, you're going down. Right. Okay. And you're like, okay, we, the pilot says we're crashing, baby. <laughs> we're going to die tomorrow. So like, I, you know, you're sitting there with your wife, your husband, and you're like, baby, we're dying. And she's like, no, you better come up with plan B. And so she's saying, you better know how to crash. Cause right. you, we know we're in trouble. Let's acknowledge that. That's all fair. Like we know when we're going uh-huh. down. So we need to come up with a way to crash pr- properly and there is a way to do it and if you were to if you know you owe money and you know you can't pay it there's you know a couple options here we, we've got bankruptcy uh we've got consolidation uh we've got settlement which again i thought we were dying here and we didn't have any money so right. i don't know where you're going to come, come up right, with that right, but right, that's right. an option yep. or we've got the fourth one which is validation or you know whatever they can't prove they have to remove and so when when the professional knows what they're doing, um, there's usually a case in your favor 99.9% of the time that you'd win this case through somebody that knows what they're doing if you guys can pick up between the lines. Here. <laughs> so typically when you know what you're doing, wink, wink, you write letters and you know exactly how to write them and you win the case, okay? And then you're able to uh, not settle and not do bankruptcy and not do consolidation all yeah, for do, way do, cheaper, do, do, way faster and still get excellent. Credit. Right. You're not supposed to freak out anymore. You're just supposed to go, hold on, wait a minute. Um, you got There's an answer that no one told There's me about. An answer that nobody told me about. Everybody just wants the anxiety and the pressure to go away. They will make you feel like, oh, you walk out of the office like, oh, my God. I'm filing God. bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, oh no, an no, 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 Right. And, and you don't realize that Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. a time to exhale. Um, there's other options so that. Um, and we, we work with it, attorneys. It does, it's not right. like they're not right. our friends or we don't. It's not like we don't have access to consolidation. It's not like we don't have access right. to settlement. Um, so the lawyers and the um, consolidation businesses and people mm-hmm. use that to make you feel better about your situation. And then you too just want to feel better about your situation. So, but in the contract, it says we want you to feel better about your situation, but we don't fix you with your credit. Right. So that's the difference. And that's what we're talking about right now because it's just education. So I'd like to go back a little bit on what we just talked about, because again, I want everyone to be clear on mm-hmm. the contract always says, will make you feel better Mm -hmm. and you can breathe, which Mm -hmm. is why you're going to them, Mm -hmm. but you're still keeping bad credit, you guys. So even if you're Mm -hmm. paying the settlements or you're paying the attorneys or you're paying any of those fees, it's still going to be on there seven years. It's still going to be bad. And there is no amount of money. Even if you want to pay the collections, you're like, I just owe it. I just want to pay it. 
just if, take it. Right. Yeah, I just want to pay it. I owe the debt. Well, you do owe the debt to the original creditor, honey, but not to the collection agency. So there's a whole nother world. Um, you know, again, you can breathe easy knowing that you have somebody that still works with attorneys and still can access a settlement if it need be. But 99% of the time, you just don't need settlement. You just don't need bankruptcy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so that's all I want to, uh, I want to make clear is, um, those contracts do not help you see it through to the end. They just help you breathe, but they've never taken you care of the real breathing. problem. You think, yeah, breathing. it's a fallacy. There's more problems after that. Yeah. So, but in the, yeah, in the middle class, I mean, yeah, you can bring up what, what you're thinking on that, but yeah, I just want to make sure everyone knows the difference. So I think it's not very clear. Yeah, a lot of the and, times. I, and I really want people, I'm trying to emphasize that don't be in a panic mode. Don't feel bad about yourself. Understand, you know what? I'm not intimidated by this. I just want the pressure to go away. So whatever that I have to do to make that pressure go away. And so there's other solutions out there that seem to, they, they, they um, market towards that. And so you feel like you're doing the right thing when you aren't taking care of this problem, the way that you think that you're taking care of the problem, you're not removing it. You're just Buying into taking the pressure to off the problem worse right. by paying yeah for for, for, for debts that are not legally owed right and they think they're There's legally a, owed and people really do think they owe the debt when it comes from a collection agency you guys. right and so she's saying that you you, you don't, don't you don't no. you don't you need to know why you don't yes and if that if you fall on uh, under I'll give those you an analogy. yeah so if Bob came knocking at your door and he said oh, yeah. MJ y- you Sally. owe you owe me money. Um, would and and Bob tells you you owe me five thousand dollars. He knocks on your door, mm-hmm. and you know, would you pay him? Honestly, if Bob walked up to my door, walked up to your door and said, "I you owe me five thousand dollars," would you just pull out a check and pay him? Uh, no, I, I would let Ricky you, go answer the yeah. door. Next. <laughs> <laughs> She'd send her bodyguards, which is who we are. Yeah, right. so we would ask uh, Bob. Well, well, why do I owe this? What do I owe it for? Where's my signature? And show me an itemized list. So there's a lot that goes into proving something that you owe. Well, it's like it's like borrowing money from Sally and then Bob showing up and saying, yes. Give me the money yes. you owe and Sally. You don't, You're never like, even I don't heard of Bob. Owe you. Yeah, I owe Sally. And then and then you try to call Sally and they say we don't owe we the don't, debt. We anymore. don't we don't own the, we so sold this it is to where Bob. your debt has been paid off or by, by, a, bought, a third party. Bought by a third party. And now this third party collection yep. agency is, is coming you. to you mm-hmm. for you to pay off this bad debt. And um, she's saying that it's not the same debt, though. With all the contract has changed. Yes, it has changed towards the consumer's rights. And the consumer rights kick in once it it gets transferred over to a third party collection agency versus the original creditor. You don't have as many rights. I mean, you they can usually prove everything, but once it gets transferred over to a different hands. There's still, it doesn't mean that you just listen to part of my story and say, I don't owe it. That's not how it works. Right. You have to hire someone that knows what they're doing and not just do copy paste or Google searching right. uh, because you can cause yourself worse. Yeah. But if you absolutely know the reputation of this person is good, then you can prove that you, you know, that they don't have the, the items that you requested. And then that not only does it debt, help you with the this debt, is not right. yeah, that you can zero out the debt um, because of the pr- paperwork is not being provided because um, debt is just paperwork. Because they don't have the that. paperwork. It's just paper. They don't have the paperwork anymore yeah, it's because not, it's not their paperwork. It's not necessarily money right. at this point. It's right. all contracts. Okay. Right. They don't have the contracts to prove the, the, right. the validity it's, of the, the dollar right. that you owe. So not only does does it disprove that when you write the correct letters and go through that, but you also um, are writing to the credit bureaus that furnishes the data. So the data is the credit bureaus, and the debt is the collection agency. So you got you got two roads that you're tackling at the same time. Now this gets into the oh my god, it's complicated. But that's again when you look at the math and you you go to you know settlement or consolidation or bankruptcy versus a program you know that. When when you hire somebody like one eighty nine a month and they just take care of the the right. paperwork for you, then it's, you get you don't pay it. You aren't paying the debts ninety nine percent of the time, right? And you're not, and you're also you're getting your credit repaired, to, um, your score fixed, and all of it included. There's so no, if you don't pay off the bad debt because it's a third party collection agency, guess you. what you get to do with the money, you guys? 
exactly you, you get, to, get to take that money and yeah you get to use it towards something towards whatever yeah. else that you and need. it's good to save up that money pretend like you're paying those uh those mm-hmm. um minimum payments and you pocket that and then you use it for the one percent time that you may be sued on a debt because that's a whole nother world but all i'm saying is if you're gonna if your ship is going down and you know you owe the money, you can get a you cannot pay it once it goes to collection agencies because of the contract. It's not because we're talking you into not paying your debts. Mm-hmm. It's not like I want you to like be a it's shyster. Paperwork. Right. Yeah, it's just the fact She's that they're saying, shysters. Right. They're they're shysters, not the you're original hacking creditors. the shysters. Yeah, you're hacking the <laughs> shysters. Yeah. So you take that money and you use it for that um once in a while moment of difficulty that you're saving up for that time. So you don't just go and spend it on things that are frivolous and you, you have a plan to get to your dream. Right. This is the plan. This is and getting yeah, the information to stay, to education stay disciplined going, okay, on the plan. So now if I know that I don't have to pay that debt off, chances are because it's a third party collection agency and it with the right help. Now I'm starting to breathe and this is good solid information. Now you can start seeing the the light path that we're starting to try and pay for you. Uh there is no more middle class. There is upper Upper or lower? Or lower. That is their mission. How many of us were just rolling in the dough a couple years ago and uh, we had some breathing room for savings? I I, I imagine people can uh, relate uh, that they maybe were even investing in crypto and stocks or whatever. And now they're like looking at that as a last resort. Um, right. And even even paying their debts, their their the money that they owe to creditors is uh, almost becoming a last resort as well. So that's when you become lower cra- class because right. that's what's going on. So here. your goal now is to understand that the world is changing mm-hmm. and accept this. And uh, what are we going to sh- do? About and it? what are we going to do about it? What's the smartest thing to do because it's going to affect me? It's going to affect you. It's going to affect the listeners. And we want to be upper class or the h- higher end of the, the lower, lower class. class. <laughs> yeah, because even if you make 200K, you're still not going to be considered. It's it, That used to be above the right. middle class. So the, the no income more. of $60,000 a year used to get you uh, a, a, a house, house in a gated community, a car, a, car. a new car. Yeah. And today, 60000 gets you. Um, like you'd have to borrow just to get your groceries. <laughs> like right. it's still it's, it's so nothing. expensive. Yeah. You use the term uh the way we fall, 30, 60, 90 days. What was that? Um, I think again, I think it would about be the 30, like the 60, way the days. way that we fall uh about, about the crash and 30, 60, 90 days being late uh before they get charged off the debt. So 30, 60, 90 is, is just bringing up if you guys are late on a debt, um, w- at what point do you determine whether or not you're going to neglect to pay the debt or if you're just going to be late? So 30 days is when you're late once and you're like, uh-oh, this is a real problem. Um, 60 days is I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to turn back now. And 90 days is it's official. I'm crashing. So after that 90 days and you get into the 120 days, now they're selling you know, the debt um, off at, at typically around 120 days. And, this and that's is where... When- Third party collection agency. That's right, kicks in. All right. Typically, of course, there's different. She's not telling you not to pay your bills until it gets to 120. No, I can't because tell you. You don't want to do it. You just right. want to. You want to talk to someone before just that. If happens. you're already there right now, then mm-hmm. there's options. But filing bankruptcy, uh, other than it staying on your credit, I mean, it, by the time you do the math on on the bankruptcy and they make it sound cheap, you know, you you file for fifteen hundred to two grand, and the price has probably gone up now uh, with everything else. Uh, but but filing a BK ends up being more expensive in the other uh, ways that you cannot get credit cards, you cannot move, you have no wings again, you have no movement. Versus if you go with uh, what I've been talking about this whole time with this uh, deleting and, and viol- uh, validation of debt and removing debt, uh, removing items, negative items on your report uh, versus bankruptcy, um, you do the T-chart and there's just no contest at all. Because when you when you remove items off of your report that are um, errors are found because credit bureaus do not report accurate uh, things right, that's the reason right. that you win the case, right. and the collection agencies also violate a lot of laws. Mm-hmm. So when you when you put all that to the your letters in, into play, you're finding that 
uh, removal so is much smarter than right. doing bankruptcy because bankruptcy hurts you for such a long time. I mean, it, you you can't just get a starter card. You can't. And people only- aren't right. And, and the world's adjusting where maybe back in the day it was OK when when we had the, the crash. But I'll tell you why it now was okay. it's now it's like. Well, it was okay then because people had homes. They had secured collateral and they had they were going right. bank, they were going foreclosure foreclosures, short sales. So their actual home was um was worth it when you think about a bankruptcy because it's a con- um you have a secured collateral versus credit card debt, which is unsecured. There's no use putting a huge beat bankruptcy and that much time you're going to jail for, you know, metaphorically speaking for seven to 10 years, you're locked up in this negative world for that long under bankruptcy um, over credit card debt, which is really unsecured debt, which is n- not near the same experiences when you have secured collateral debt, which is homes that they can attach liens onto unsecured debt. There's no liens being tied to you, you know, like they right. don't just come after your home and that's again, shelter, which we haven't discussed, but yeah, that's your first thing you that. should be thinking um, about. Right. Because you got to think, all right, a BK is going to get you a 10 year sentence, sentence yeah. and uh, versus really what you're just looking at is a temporary hardship. So there you go. Don't, lose your shit people it's temporary yes it can be temporary you can make it 10 years you can get yourself you know there's uh, an absolute time you can do the math on when you do it right i mean you you do know that you'll be out of the out of the shit storm within you know uh, 24 months versus yeah 10 years um okay so uh she's talking about if you get a job offer and they're wanting you to even relocate this would affect you being able to Take the job, even all of it, because you got to check that, the box, right? You, it's you just like if you were a felon, gonna find out. It's That's the same right. thing. Um, the BK is when is that good? Uh, I, I mean, like I say, it, it's worth worthy of thinking about bankruptcy when you owe, you know, in the a hundred thousand dollar range of unsecured debt, or you owe multiple properties. And you're going down, not when you have student loans, because they don't take care of you when you have student loans debt. Um, and and it's again, I can't advise you on, you know, when you should do BK, but probability wise, what makes sense is if there's um, you don't have multiple properties that you're foreclosing on. So the typical person that I speak with does not have that problem. They right. usually have thirty thousand dollars or they usually have like ten thousand dollars of credit card debt and they're like i'm just gonna file bankruptcy. even if it's thirty thousand no forty thousand fifty thousand it's, it's not, not worth it's think, not worth being until just, you first just temporary right until, until you, you first try, try the to, other right. alternative um a lawyer will tell you to file because they they make, make money. money and um that's it right um people get on it need okay. to get so, on a budget so, yep so you don't want to be late on your house or your car because you're looking at your debt okay here's the real life scenario so she's bringing up notes that we're talking about but let me give you the real life scenario so you're looking at thirty thousand dollars of credit card debt you're looking at your house payment of um you know eighteen hundred dollars a month your mortgage and then your homeowner's insurance you got these uh payments in front of you then you have your car for five hundred dollars a month or whatnot so you're looking at the unsecured credit card debt um and you realize okay I'm screwed and I'm not going to be able to pay something. I'm not going to be able to meet the amount that I owe this month, period. Mm -hmm. So what do I do first? So the very first thing you should do is not affect or be late on your house or your car. So everything else becomes secondary. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying. And then those, those don't, you just try not to ruin your car and your house first. (laughs) If you have any options, go for the unsecured credit card if you have to. Um, and then you can either A, work out a hardship plan directly with the credit cards if you don't want to go through collections or you, you're... Sh- but if she's talking about the ship is going down and there's no options, um, then that'll be the order of operations that you do it in is your credit cards, your unsecured items, you let those go first, your credit card debt. And just try not to be late on your house and your car because the damage can be minimized on your credit that you're going to use to get back up into in the meantime until you're looking for more income. Right. And then live within your means. Under um, your stay, means. Under, under your means. If our ship's gone down and we know that and our credit is about to be affected or it's, it is affected and you're getting calls 
um, you first want to reach out to somebody. Uh, I mean, we answer questions all the time, uh, but you're going to start getting letters in the mail. You're going to start getting threats. You're going to get your phone's going to ring off the hook and you do not want to talk to any collection agencies or anybody that you do not know um, at all. If it's not in your phone book, don't answer. And if you are, um, if you're going to be able to make your, your house and your car payment, the reason I say that is because later on you can use that to your refinance mode. Like your, your right. house and car have their own credit, right. essentially, even mm. though it's part of your credit, you still have a little bit of leverage right. if you treat your car credit good and right. your mortgage credit good, right. but your credit card debt and all those things, yes, it'll harm your score immensely when you don't pay them, but this is a matter of survival. I don't, I don't like the vibration of like times are changing the gloom and doom. I like can't live in a world like and that. No, it's so I, depressing. It is not how I think. I Me swear either. I don't, I don't watch the news. I don't. So the information that we're trying to give you, uh, my intentions are to give you all the information so that you don't, you don't feel, feel like you're living in that kind of world and just being kind of smart about it and like, okay, this may be going on. Right. But I got my stuff under control yeah. on the basic levels, at least. Right. You know? Because knowledge is fucking power. Mm -hmm. So if you just have the information, then that's all you really need. To you're be always a smart. step ahead, even with the simplest things. Right. Like, it changes honestly. your mentality. Otherwise, you're going to be every time you go get gas or you go get food, you're just going to be like, oh, insecure. my God, insecure. And that negative energy is going to affect your life. It's going to affect when you go home to kiss your husband or your wife. You you're going to feel defeated. Brings. Um, you, you may feel really good because you got paid more this week for whatever reason or something or whatever. But then, it, you know, it then something happens the next week and you're like, it's just knowledge is power. And, and the way that you think is your reality. So we're trying to give you information so that you can remain positive and see it from a different I call Persever. power of you yes. um, so that you remain Great in your power point. and not freak out and and not fall into again remember you're just wanting the pressure off this is paperwork it is it's uh is medical medical bills are they reported to credit well in 2023 I think they're not going to be reporting anything 500 or less but we aren't there yet and that can change but um, medical bills, yes, uh, owed to collections will are a report to your credit currently. Okay. And yep. And so those are common that we get a lot of those just over billing code mistakes. And that's why you have a case. Again, you wouldn't go just paying those out of nowhere. You would again go with the contesting route that I'm talking about. Um, it's better for you to have bad credit than to take your yes. cash and yes. go spend it on debt that you don't realize yes. you don't have to pay. And uh, she'd rather you understand that, hey, correct. Again, this is just paperwork. No, knowledge. you're absolutely right. So you, when you what you just said is 100% true. So a lot of people just go giving up all their money, the only savings they had right now during this time. Right. And they're paying a collection that they don't even know who it is. Right. They're just paying it because the bill came in the mail and they just want the monkey off their back. But the debt was actually uh, something that you just write a letter to and you end up saving that money, not paying them and removing it from your credit at the same time. And you save that money and you right. put it towards something positive that will help your credit. Right. Or your dream. That's right. And, and that's, that's all that all goes to the dream. Baby. It, yeah. And all this makes you just feel like, empowered. wow, I can you're empowered and you're like, OK, I'm not a part of the system. Yes. But you're always a part of the system. That's why she says the your your the ultimate smarter judgment than the system. is. <laughs> yeah, you're smarter than the system. Uh, OK, credit scores. Bad credit is 620 or below. Average is 680 and good is 720 above. Average credit gets you what nowadays? Nothing. You can, yeah. I mean, if you want to live on the edge and 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 barely make it through and do a six eighty mid score, um, yes, they'll take you, you know, to do a loan and all that. But then you have all these, you know, negative things that goes with that. So why not? If you're gonna go for a six eighty, why not just go and shoot for the stars and do a seven twenty? Right, and the good credit gets you. Yeah, I mean, you can refinance. You can excellent credit gets you to zero percent. Good credit gets you to lower interest rates. Um, so again, you're close to that. Zero, you know, less but, interest rate so that you can use other people's money to refinance. And right. It opens up everything. When you have good credit, great credit, it opens up. It just gives you options. That's why you would want, you're using other people's money. You would 
you want to get to great credit good debt not like dave ramsey like right. you're going to be good debt meaning you're using like you you want to use that debt to get forward not just to have debt i'm not saying just to have debt but right. to have a goal in mind for your dream what if you wanted to buy go and open a restaurant you need to buy the equipment it makes you money that's right. the kind of debt we're talking that's about good and debt. that's yeah that's right. the type of percentage of interest rates right. so that we aren't paying like three stoves we're paying for one stove with just a little bit of fee right. not like three stoves so or and, three mercedes and if, and if you have bad credit or if you have um yes the average Terrible credit, credit or average. you're paying so three much houses more instead of one. Right. exactly uh You'll, they'll give you the loan though <laughs> you know yeah. it's not even about that like they'll still loan to you right? yeah the, it's just terrible the, 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 interest rate and, right yeah most people think that they're in this category when i talk to you like most people think they are Screwed. Just got a couple of bad oh, yeah. things. Totally. Just a couple. Everybody's like, I just I'm have good. a couple of medical collections. I just have a couple, have a couple student loans. And you say, Yeah, I always say, I think I'm going to have to look at the x ray and find that your whole body's broken. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's not to be funny, but I just think that people really do they don't try realize to minimize. that they're bad. It's yeah. Bad. They, yeah. And I'm like, Listen, not, a 500 is a bad, 500. Yeah. They're bad, but it's. Just a couple of bad ones affects what it, your life. Yes. When you could just be in there going, man, you know what? I think um, if I just took care of, if I got the information to see if I even owe these debts. The truth of it is, if you owe $500 or $5 and it's still owed to a collection agency, you still have a negative item on your report. It still affects you the same. So some people will say, I just have a $5 debt. Or I just have a hundred dollar medical Doesn't bill. Matter. Yeah. It's the same thing. You have a negative item on your credit and your scores affected the same. It doesn't understand dollar bills. Credit card hopping. Yes, I love credit card hopping. <laughs> but I don't know if that's what you mean. But uh, you, when when you use zero percent to balance transfer mm -hmm. from one credit mm -hmm. card to mm -hmm. another, mm -hmm. that takes excellent Everybody credit. Everybody knows because you're using, using zero percent, mm -hmm. um, and they send you those pre approvals. You're pre approved from mm -hmm. Discover for zero percent mm -hmm. for twenty four months, and the balance transfer fee is three percent mm -hmm. or seventy five dollars. So so thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, excellent. I love it because that allows you. But to you use, only get that if you have, have excellent credit. <laughs> <laughs> Not good, but excellent. That zero uh, percent money, th those are the real big games. That's the kind of stuff that we're aiming for. So that right. your stove, we're getting it for free. We're just so saying we're for the just stove. right because the the better credit that you have, if you have excellent credit, you do start getting just fucking free. Yeah, free. people just give you it's, right yeah, money. So if you guys can just go, you know what? I'm going to start goaling myself to clean up my credit because. It is going to, I mean, the ROI it matters even when you start getting on in investment it. is huge. You know what I love about your marketing is that you're always talking about, you kind of get, give it like a dating, like you, you make the, the, the credit score, like the man and, and the yes. things that you do, because it's true. It's relatable. There's three wives. Yeah. Credit God. Yeah. The credit experience, Equifax and TransUnion is like having three wives and you have to please all three of them and they all have different needs <laughs> and you have to please them all at the same, same time simultaneously and understand each one of their needs. Right. And um, Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. Right. And they, they grant you with things. But if, they you're, give you more but if things. you're a male, let's talk about that because, mm -hmm. you know, how we judge them if they have bad credit or what? Well, what does it do for a man to have good credit? It's huge. I mean, like right. I say, we, we are not that it's better for women to love not. And lies, but <laughs> That's right. Not that having bad credit or good credit we're not judging anybody we please we got to let you know we're trying to make your life better and for you to feel confident in yourself and give you the information so that what you deserve you, what you deserve what you deserve to feel like mm -hmm. because it's just one of those things when it comes up you either sink in your chair mm -hmm. Yeah. You're oh, like, good gosh. thing I'm good looking. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Can we use your credit? Can we? <laughs> yeah. Um, or you're like, I hold my I'm head up high. I got you, girl. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're wanting you to feel like. I and mean, everybody I, deserves I help to feel a lot like of that. Men. I mean, and you can get that. But I love the guys I help because they're all about it. They call me and they're super excited. Trying to do something about yeah, it. They're they're like, yeah. Shit in, yep. yeah. They're like, Shana, how do I get there? Like, what do I do? Let's do it. That's so attractive. Yeah, it really is. You know, mm -hmm. I, I get excited. Mm -hmm. I roll up my sleeves. I'm like, let's do this. 
together right, you know right, right you gotta right. take it on as a partner it's sexy to take care of yeah it is you guys mm-hmm. it's sexy it, it is never unsexy to me when someone calls me about a bad time because i've always had that like i've had it so mm-hmm. i get it it's mm-hmm. super it is they're being hot. responsible yeah when a guy calls and they're like yeah let's do this like it's super fun just you may not know how to build a building but you'd go out and you'd, you'd t- tell someone let's do this together it's fun i mean same thing with credit you just build it you know, you don't know what you're doing. You just go and get a contractor, someone that help, helps you along the way. And that's that's funner than not building anything at all. <laughs> By the end of the episode, they're going to realize that they're going to take, it's not going to be an emotional decision anymore for them. They're going to look just at business. this more like it's paperwork. Really, that's what you got. Oh, it's just data. It, yeah. I look at credit like a computer coding thing. It's just, that's what I always tell people. Don't get so emotional about credit. Right. It is people just get, coding mm-hmm. on paper. People will sleep better tonight. After hearing this, they'll be like, okay, there's answers. (sighs) Yeah. Nothing better than just like being in control. And that is not hiding from it and going, okay, I just need to deal with this. Because if you just deal with it, you're just going to get better credit and free shit. Better everything. Better everything. Better everything. (laughs) You might even have better sex. Yeah. (laughs) I imagine you, you would. would. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Uh, okay. So we want to make sure that you guys are educating yourself and be prepared for any kind of just crash or loss answers. of job or the economy right now. Yeah. Uh, you guys, at any at any situation that you're in and in, in every... Um, when we talk about dreams all the way up here, if you're just talking about stress and you can't even move your... Mm-hmm. You know, you can't even get out of bed, depression... We do best with those people because that's that was me. I understand that feeling. So if you just, you know, call us and we'll talk you off the ledge for any scenario. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like, I'm here and I'm good and I just want to be better. You know, we absolutely have an answer for you of just giving you resources. So she's saying for the same price that you pay off bad debt, you can remove um, debt. The item of one, one debt, if they paid one debt, we're cheaper than them paying one debt. And fixing their and entire you get, credit right, you get, and getting all the solutions. Right. So you get your credit cor- score increased. Your The debt's taken care of. All of them. And the Not negative the report one. and all of that. And you have some cash you can stick in your mattress. Yes. Or store it. In yes, your your storage. But that's what she's saying about, you know, it's, it's this is all about being able to have money to um breathe and save and we do all the puzzle your dreams. pieces they do all you. the puzzle pieces yeah. so um for the same of for the same price of paying off one debt you say yes yeah uh people also think that having um paying their bills on time on the due date is is good credit proper it's etiquette good. to pay it's, bills yeah. it's not you guys are supposed to be paying your bills five days before they due, days. ten days before they're to due, to clear before the due date, to clear before the due date, because there is a credit score within the credit scoring that when you, if it's due on the first and you pay on the first, then you get a score for that. If you pay ten days earlier, then they go, oh, she doesn't. It's just more about the paying before the due date because the co- credit again is just codes and data and you want to meet all the codes at the same time right, the codes and and one of those codes is um utilization if you're using a, a credit card and you're going to pay your payment of the minimum payment is thirty dollars a month or you're paying it off every month you want to pay it off in my opinion 10 days before the due date because you're telling the credit bureau that's judging you know the the, the score your grade on if you're you if you need the credit are you using it are you keeping a balance but if you pay it off they're like oh she doesn't need the the money so we're going to give her a higher score for that the utilization is low but we're also going to give her a, um, some more points for um, the zero balance so you've got utilization that you're using it once a month that's great they're they're saying okay you're actually using it but you're also paying it off and so if you hit both of those codes at once and you're able to do not carry a balance on your credit card um, on the credit reporting agencies when they look at the balance at the end of your monthly cycle and they see that you have a balance on there, you want to make sure it's a zero balance. You know, yes, people say 10%, keep your credit cards at 19%. I just believe in 
doing 0% um, and then you pay it off before it's due. So that way you're getting both of those codes at the same time, which is zero, you know, the utilization is at zero, but you're also getting utilizing, <laughs> you're using them. And your credit. So those are two, two codes on your, on in one. To, right. To, two codes. That's what I'm saying. There's a code inside of, of a, a code. code. Yeah. So we want to hit like five codes at once and that gets complex. You already have to pay the bills. You just change changing the something that you're already you doing pay for it. Yeah. There's something inside it's those that little they tricks go. and hacks that make all the difference of like over. Well, perfect credit versus they don't know you. They don't know, you know, Johnny and and Becky. And it's just you are numbers. You are you are numbers on a. Your data. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's just da, 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 da. Yeah, they don't so know you. You're just they... reduced to a code to them, right? But that code gets you the character of that code. That code gets you, you know, uh, more. It and unlocks, you don't even realize it unlocks key. that. Yeah, yes. right. It unlocks everything, and all of a sudden now you're able to move and wiggle, and you're like, wow, all I did was start paying my bills well, ten days earlier. Yeah, that's it, and it just works for you. Yeah. Um, what about if somebody has, so Dave Ramsey says, pay your smaller bills and then go for your bigger. What do you say if somebody has a, sure. like a $10,000 credit card debt sure. and then the other? Yeah, he like talks small. about paying them off small at the smaller one first because it's a snowball effect versus I look at utilization. So if something's maxed out and let's say they owe $5,000 on one credit card and they are maxed out at 4,990 versus they have another credit card that they owe 300, the small mm -hmm, amount mm -hmm, that Dave Ramsey mm -hmm. would say, um, and they only owe uh, $50 on that one. But the utilization code is different. This I is would what want we're talking them, about. I would want them to pay down the 4,990 by a little bit versus paying off that other one because the maximum amount of score that's hurting them. They're not. Is that one? It's that. Yeah. It's that maxed out code that's hurting the most right. versus that measly so little Dave $50. So Dave Ramsey also, he's That's a bad example, work, but, but right. I'm just giving you the analogy. But, but he has, he, your goal with Dave Ramsey, if I believe is to be debt free and cash. still hit all the codes <laughs> with credit, but he he's all about like cash, right? Being completely debt free. Yeah. Um, where like I say, you you're saying good, you're going to yeah. use credit, it's going to be good credit, it's going to be good debt, and make the make everything work. For I like you. to do both at the same time, not right. just do the Dave Ramsey effect, but actually do his methods, but marry it with a little bit more. You know, doing things at the same time. If you're already doing this, why not do that? And it brings you a tenfold return, right? Like just by doing small little intricate differences. Little tiny things. Yes, and that's what my you know, the way I think. Versus so if Dave. somebody really wanted to reach you, uh, Shana, the credit shrink, and they can all your social media credit shrink and 602-734-9943. Yeah. Um, and I'm all over. Yeah. You just Google credit shrink. Or yeah. Facebook credit. Shrink. She's just got so much knowledge in this and she's been doing this for a very long time and she's been on both sides of the. Um, yeah. What, later on, we'll talk about how this all started. Right. Yeah. So um, I went to courthouses. I've, I've done crazy things. You guys, I'd file, I'd file things at the courthouse and demand they did this with look at the clerks. And the, they, they would escort me out. <laughs> I've tested out every single thing you could imagine to the, the, you know, <laughs> to the scariest things ever that you would be like nervous to do. And I've tested out all of these things, whether it be original creditors, collection agencies. So I've definitely, <laughs> you know, walked yeah. one mile she in your shoes. Right. Yeah. And I've tried everything to see what, what's really the truth out there. You know, putting my thumbprint on stamps and red ink and I mean, mm -hmm. writing in blue diagonals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done all the tricks. So I rest assured that I've tried it and I've been where you're at. And that's what started this whole madness <laughs> over here was me being upset with how they treated consumers in the dealership world. Um and the way the lending is is backwards and it's not consumer centric, it's more lender forward. But yeah, I just took all these things that I had a chip on my shoulder about and and built this company from the ground up and also was was in your shoes where I was faced with the 2008 crash. And, you know, I only had uh, one way, which was up because <laughs> I was <laughs> as rock bottom as you got. <laughs> Food stamps, ramen noodles, baby. <laughs> well, she makes credit sexy. I love your marketing Thank and all of that you. stuff. She just makes it fun and attractive and easy and positive. And 
that's what we that's what we want you guys to to and and don't get me wrong all of these things that i unpack it so that maybe the guy that's a business owner listens and he's like Mm -hmm. there's a trick granted if you're a client and you don't want to know any of this and you just want to be like here (laughs) take care of it i don't want to know any of that that is really our our model like we really do just take care of everything we do everything you do nothing that's what we say like that is what we do everybody wants that yeah in this world yeah (laughs) so you just basically set it and forget it that is what we do but if you're the guy that's like i want to know this i want to know that like i'm super like you like analytical and science like what is this equal (laughs) like Mm -hmm. i'm really annoying like that but if you're the guy that's like i, I just don't want to know and i just want the end result babe i'm like here you go that's, <laughs> that's awesome. it there's the dream and the dream is what we want to stay focused on you yeah. know so to stay focused on the dream because every time i'm going to keep dangling your keys you know in front of you like this is what you want do this this is going to be this this right here what you just did yeah. is going to equal this every single time just follow my lead yeah. And it's, it is. And I give you the breadcrumbs. Like you don't even have to, you don't even have to go searching. Like I just give you the thing to do right there. That little thing that right. we just talked about. Yeah. Just do the little things. I mean, there's nothing like confidence. Mm. So we just want to have confidence in that area in our life because it can and will and does hold you back. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Drag you down. Like, yeah. Um, and it can also put boost you up too. Yes. When you get. Feel confident. Well, yeah, when you look Feel at good. that, yeah, really excellent score, and you never even tasted an eight hundred before, and you right. realize the things that come to your mail. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting, yeah. right? Uh huh. Yeah, the you're zero like, percent. Yeah, <laughs> you want as many cards as possible. They're hounding your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they want you. They fight over you. Yeah, they do, and they don't even like need much proof. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, well, you know, it's just not nearly what you go through when you're at like that kind of sort of credit score you know it's right just a whole you go out world. and try and get a credit card and they're like okay a 300 hundred dollar limit yeah. and your interest yeah. rate is like 50 yeah totally <laughs> and we have an annual hey, fee because because if you file for that bankruptcy you're going to have to apply start for those over. credit cards yeah and you you're going to start, start that's the other thing even after the uh the bankruptcy you're having to it's just to start over all over again apply for at a stuff. negative. Yeah, because you're below start, the ground level. But you have to do, you start have to start getting the credit cards. Starter cards. Starter cards mm-hmm. to establish the good credit. Mm-hmm. So you're just Plus you have to, to remove all, over all over the negative stuff. Right. You, it doesn't just right. start at starter cards. You have right. to remove the negatives yep. and do starter cards. So it's like double whammy. Right. That's why I say bankruptcy sounds cheap. It's not. Again, you're just wanting when you guys walk into these offices or make these calls, you're just wanting the pressure to be off of you and stop. And I just can't emphasize that. And so don't lose your don't lose sight of that. Understand. I'm just feeling the pressure. I just want the pressure. Yes. I'm not going to fall for this. I'm going to sit I'm back. I'm being emotional. Right. And reactive. Don't lose sight. Yes. Just go. I just want the pressure off. Yeah. That's with anything. And every, I mean, if, and just be careful of the person that's taking If they're a snake in the grass, like they're going to take the pressure off, but that's only because you can only see so far, you know, like, you don't have the yeah, you don't know. Yeah. So there's three questions that I ask every guest and that is, uh, where is the love in where your story? Um, well, the love for me, if you're asking me personally, like my story of where the love is, is more about um, my clients have turned into my friends and I've taken them on this journey and I've almost like turned them into um, savages with me. Like they're all about like making their dreams come true and like they're trying to make money moves now where they maybe just started and called me with like a simple, like, I just want to get a house. And I'm like, no, let's like level up. Let's like, what's your dream? Come on. And like people are quitting their jobs and being like, I want to do, they send me YouTube videos. Like, what do you think about this? So yeah, I, I get a kick out of that or, you know, just them being able to walk into a dealership a little bit, you know, like I'm like, we, we won, we beat them. Like we beat them in their game. Like, I love that. I mean, I honestly love it. That's <laughs> <It's awesome. sick. laughs> um, What is the uh, lie? The lie is uh, these things out there that, that take people, like I tell you, you're running through the forest and set it to the road. You're running. You think you're going in the right direction, but <laughs> you actually ran the opposite way, but you ran just as fast. But yeah, the lie is just more about, you know, um, when you have, when you're armed with the right information, you, you might be learning, but you might be learning the wrong information. Right. You're learning. It's just the wrong information right. and you're focused on the wrong problem. 
Right. So if you focus on the right problem and, you know, you don't just fall for marketing gimmicks and these little bones in front of your face that say, we're giving you free credit monitoring, you know, or any of these things that are marketing you guys and you, um, it's marketing, that's the and, they're, lie. and they're marketing towards your emotions. Yes. It's the lie. Stay out of your emotions. Yep. There's, there's just lies want the lies. pressure. Off. Yeah. And they just, yep. There you go. They just want to satisfy that first little emotional issue, the reaction to the problem. And meanwhile, you're over there like pressing dispute. And <laughs> that's not what you want to do. You guys don't press dispute. All of a sudden you wake up the living dead. Right. It's like, Oh, uh, Hey, uh, the dead that you thought was leaving you alone. <laughs> hey, we're here knocking on your door, but we're actually going to sue you. Cause you didn't know how to handle Bob. <laughs> Man, so you just, I have that's a, the I lie. Have, uh, who could uh, start taking money from your paycheck? Does anyone have the Whenever you don't right? respond to Bob, like anybody has the right to sue you and garnish when you don't respond. So if you ignore and you don't know what you're... So even though you owe Sally and Bob's knocking on your door and, and saying, you never did the anything, money, which is a third party. You ignored them, you never but you did didn't it. follow through with what I'm telling you by getting hold of a professional that actually knows what to write back to Bob. And we So write, Bob can sue you. Yeah, anyone can sue you these days. So a third anyone. party can sue you and mm -hmm. yeah, garnish you didn't, your wages. You didn't contest. Because you didn't contest. Yeah. You're, so I bet okay, you she didn't me, even owe the debt. Just like mail. Damn. If I send you a piece of mail, that's why it's called registered mail, official mail. There's a reason for the post office being official and those stamps and all those things. They go back a long ways. So when you're receiving a piece of paper in the mail, that is your way of saying I'm receiving it unless you write. Yeah, a, a, they unless said, you say, yep. I object to this and you right. write back to that person right. sending you something. So that's why I say you need to write. You can't just do part of the job. You have to get the whole All job. It, right. Yeah, you can't just ignore a debt. Right. And that's the worst thing people can do is when you bring that up. That's actually when people call when it's too late, that they already have a judgment in place. It's like that's already gone through the courthouse. You have to be proactive about debts. Right, right when you feel the debt happening, call someone. It doesn't cost you to talk to someone and they will tell you like exactly. Wait, not many. Now you know how to crash. Now you know how to crash. Yeah. Because you get there the information. You, you have to know like, how to okay. crash. Right. There you go. So you don't wait till after you crash. You know you're going to crash. It's not a big deal. When you when you know right, you're gonna crash, right. but if you wait till but after, you don't want you want to just like lose a wing. You don't want to crash the entire plane. No. you don't want everything to go down. Right. Yep. It's the same thing. You land on water and glide. Right. That's it. That's yeah. the difference. That's what we you're are. Like, watch this, bitch. Yeah, I know how to land this baby. Yeah, it's <laughs> just how to show off. Drive. Yes. There you go. Um. All right. And what is the truth? Um. The truth is finding somebody, I mean, when you're talking about, are we talking about work, like work-related truth whatever, or whatever's the whatever truth? Whatever truth, what's the truth of the story, of, of your story? Yours the, specifically or just what, you, what you're doing? I mean, the truth. The truth, deri the truth derives from a place that we've all been, which is the, the, the truth is um, like me telling you that I've been there before and you're actually able to walk in truth and you aren't just some internet guru that's copying and pasting you have actually suffered before and that's what brings you to a place that you can help others because there's you know there's no veil there's mm -hmm. no fakeness it's mm -hmm. all i've i've trudged through the mud and i've went through all the angles and i've figured all out you know um so, so there's just no shame in in being uh as low as you can go um because I've been there and I can relate. So it's, that's the beauty of truth is when you've gone through what someone else mm -hmm. has gone through and you aren't just telling them what to do, but you've lived right. it. She can relate. Mm -hmm. Credit is sexy. Yes. It, or it could not be. Put sexy, some high heels on that is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. I always listen to this. I and, love you. Yeah, my nail girls and I, we all powwowed around like the typical, oh my God, she going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> Got the headphones, the Bluetooth thumb, baby. Now I'm here. <laughs> I love it. You're awesome. You are. I love you, babe. Yeah, you thank too. you. All right, girly. All right, you guys, the credit shrink. And she is sexy. Not only does she make credit sexy, but she's sexy. Too. Oh, my goodness. I have a lot to live up to. You hear that? <laughs> All right. But. I don't want I'm women. I don't want so women. Sexier. No, I don't want women to be intimidated by your advertising and your marketing and all that stuff. She's not going to look at your man. She's not going to do it. She's, she's a, a confident woman, but she's 
there I'm to more be of by a nerd, actually, than yeah. I am. She just calls me sexy, but I'm more of like a brainiac. Right, but some people can by by they're in mar- they're by mm-hmm. they're like, be so a model sexy. to come in and take pictures of my work? Right. <laughs> no, oh, you don't have to. They're like, do you have to be a model to come in and tan? No, you don't. Um, but marketing would give people like that. And, um, in, in, in a wife may detour mm-hmm. her husband from, I want to go see her because you're attractive. And I don't want women to think that they are going to have that kind of experience with you. She's not like that no, at no, all. Not at that's all. That's a real thing. Yeah, that's right. Because your advertisement, you're beautiful in person and on your, in your marketing, you're beautiful. And so that derails. And I don't want you guys to miss my most important thing that I will ever die with. Like that is that's right. Number one thing important in so my life. Don't have to worry. She's not going to, she, it's, it's not going to be that experience. So I want you to feel confident with her. We have a beautiful secure. team that yeah. really cares about our people too. Like yeah. they really take it personal. And- Some people are intimidated by, by good looks and mm-hmm. they don't, you know, it's just an intimidation factor where they don't realize that you should come so over at night so whenever unique. I wear my glasses and my uh, moo pants, you know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> um, she's real as fuck. And, um, and I don't want you to not, go to her because she's good looking oh i never i never knew and but i, don't I, want I do you, understand that that might be that is a that thing and i don't want you to go to her because she is good looking well, yeah there you go she doesn't date her clients <laughs> <Nope>. either <laughs> that's right <laughs> professional baby we just want to make your dreams come true as a couple mm. i mean i do sit down with my my friends and my couple i mean my couples become my friends so we we're on the same journey you know we all yeah. are we're all connected yeah respect definitely yeah. All right, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope so. Love it. Yeah. All right, you guys, I will leave her information, uh, contact information um, in the content. And there you have it. The truth, the credit shrink. That's right. (laughs) Bye.